So I was for me. That's a say by Kelly there. And he launches one into the ball. Launches one into the ball. Two fights called No Man's Land. I'm head on the ball. I'm head on the ball. I'm head on the ball. Oh, what a block there. Player number 22. Oh, look, what a ball on the ball. Ha! Whoa. Just misses it. Now you may have the number seven, Victor Udo. Oh, the dummy. Find on the board to nobody. I've been running these things for quite a while and just so I'm the host of this beautiful tournament called the Tough Arena Mini League. Um, it started up two years ago when we had just um, two, two tables of four teams each. And we've been able to grow the league into what you see today of six teams, 12 grassroots teams of different calibers. We've been able to bring them together. And the, the competition has been extremely competitive. There are a lot of um, agents that, we, that have come by and have spoken to us regarding some of the beautiful players that have been on, on the scene here. Yes, we are very happy to emerge as the winner of this tournament. The last uh, edition we didn't take due to so many commitments in our hands. But this year when we said we must be part of the of the edition. So as you can see, all our boys are becoming and the quality it's good, actually it's good, um, the dedication and the hard work, but I'm focused and this is my work, so I have to give up my best. But... A good one there for HB Academy for winning the tough arena 11 aside football. Grassroots football development in the FCT is really growing. And we just have to appreciate the fact that such tournament actually exists. Welcome you on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini G. Shafe, where we have to be looking at some trending stories that happened during the weekend. Well, good one. At least the Commonwealth Games actually ended for Nigerian athletes for the trials ahead of the Commonwealth Games and also the World Athletics Championship that will be coming up in. Oregon, USA, where stars are right now being made. A lot of Nigerian athletes have actually showed their uh, class qualifying for that competition. We'll be looking at most of this as we continue on the show. Joining the talk sport is Chinedum Ohanusi. Good to have you. Yeah, thank you so much, Adeni. Good morning. There. Let's uh, talk some sport. Let's start from the Commonwealth Games trials, where the likes of Favor Ashe are not forgetting uh, Grayson War Culture. They were able to win the 100 meters for men and women. That was a fantastic one for the two of them, for the fact that they were able to win it. Favor Ashe was able to do that ahead of the likes of Alaba Kintola, who actually came second. And for the women, good one for Fe uh, Grayson War Culture, who actually came ahead of Rosemary Chukuma. And not forget the fact that, well, Rosemary, international star, but she came second behind uh, Grace Ungo coach out there. Well, I love the fact that at least uh, a lot of, uh, I don't want to call them veteran, but we know these likes of Grace Ungo coach, uh, Rosemary Chukuma, Laba Kintola, they all show class. But right now we have our teams ready for Commonwealth Games. Yeah, even those that were injured mm -hmm. seem to have picked uh, some support form, at least uh, completing the lineup for the relays. Uh, this time around, we'll be going without our double 
Commonwealth champion, blessing mm -hmm. of Kabare, you know, the issues uh, surrounding her case. And uh, we believe that uh, if not for the small hiccups and the uh, in house squabbles we have in the AFN, uh, things will have been better. But nice to know that those that participated at the Edo uh, 2020 games, uh, some of them are showing class already. Mm. Uh, they are picking form. We hope they get to actually pick, and uh, b you know, before the World Championship in Oregon, uh, the USA, and so, uh, subsequently the Birmingham uh, Commonwealth Games. And I love the fact that uh, our lady of action, when it comes to hurdles, uh, to Biloba Mushon, she was able to smash her own record, 12.54 seconds. Mm. And now, Tobiloba seems to be ready for this year. Uh, from the way it is, last time in, it was in France at the Paris Gold uh, Diamond League, she actually ran 12.41 seconds. That's a new African, African record. record. Mm. And now she ran 12.54 in Nigeria as a record for herself. And now we are looking at if she can trans actually continue this way, at the Oregon and also at the Birmingham City, we expect the from uh, Tobilo Bama. Uh, for her, she picked at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, the only fear now is the letter be no born out. And, um, you know, she's been very unlucky. Mm -hmm. uh, before the Games in Japan, the Olympic Games in Japan, uh, where she finished fourth, the fourth meant that the two of them that finished third, Nothing was there to separate them except the normal thing they do the, in uh, uh, athletics, mm. where they do the photo finish, etc. And uh, that was how she missed out of a medal at the Olympics. She almost cried. Uh, it also happened to her at the Worlds the previous year. Then this time around, everything is just going on smoothly for her. I'm so happy for that girl. She's from Ogun State, and uh, um, there was a race she ran, and uh, that was earlier this year. And she was saying, look at myself doing better than I did at the Olympics. And I said, God's time is the best mm. uh, for her and many other ones. And uh, it is nice to know that the sports minister have taken caution. Uh, they've not, um, they've been able to put all these athletes through their paces and through doping procedure, uh, pre-doping, uh, competition doping tests, so that we don't go to the Olympics or the World Championship and we say, oh, you cannot run because already, as we know, Nigeria is in the A category. K category means we are in a category that have a lot of suspicion mm. uh, about doping issues at the international stage. So it is left for us to make sure that any athlete we are taking there, we scrutinize them very well, make sure they don't have skeletons in their cupboards. Good one there. Hopefully, Nigerian team will do well there at Commonwealth Games and also at the World Athletics in Oregon. We've been talking about uh, the Commonwealth Games trials and also what athletics that actually took place in Benin City, where athletes like uh, Tobiloba Mushon, not forgetting Nekwes Chichupuka, alongside Grace Nwo coach Fivoashi Alabaki Tola. Alabaki Tola actually won the 200 meters for himself. Uh, they all did well. Tima, God bless, also did our best. Well, for this particular sport called athletics, Nigeria we know we have a lot of strength there. We are waiting, at least looking at what's going to happen concerning Team Nigeria at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. Wishing them all the best as they will be uh, prosecuting their athletics uh, prowess there. They'll be showing their class at those uh, particular events that we just talked about. Now, let's go to the round later game. NNL, Nigerian National League. Matches were played over the weekend. Let's look at the result from A1, B2, B3, and all that. Let's look at A2, rather. Starting from Green Berets, that's the team, uh, Nigeria Army team. They defeated Road Safety by a long goal. Nav FC, Nigerian Air Force uh, Football Club, defeated Malum Fashi by three goals to one. Jigawa Golden Stars also won their game 3-1 against Kebi United. Now we look at B2 results, uh, uh, rather B1 results. We look at B1 results now in March day 19. Ibom Youth FC, they lost at home against Benden Insurance 2-1. And you have Jia Tete, Ekiti United, we are coming to that particular match. Adoration FC against Campos 1-0. Abelkuta Stores against uh, uh, the, the one against Jan Brillas 2 1, while Oshu United 1, Vandressa nil. Gateway United 2, Ikorodu City uh, nil. They are good one for those games. And now let's look at uh, B2 as we also went down across Nigeria. March the 19th also, Abia Comet. They actually lost against Bayelsa United by a long goal. Apex Crane 3, Rovers FC nil. FC 1, Rocket 2 against Goran FC. Newe United 
They actually defeated Sporting Lagos by two goals to one. Sido Shaw FC three, Ijebu United nil. And you have Otasolo, although they didn't show up. So that was a walkover for Wari Wolves with 3.3 uh, three goals for Wari Wolves there because Otasolo actually pulled out of the NNL. Well, that's it. That's how it went down across Nigeria in the Nigerian National uh, League match day 19. And all those uh, uh, teams actually play well. But going to what we, I actually said earlier concerning J. Atete and Ikiti United. That game went on. That was the story we are looking at next now. J. Atete players, fans, they attacked the uh, referee, the female referee that was actually standing. Patience. Uh, patient said, okay, who actually attacked, and now she was rushed to the hospital where, uh, well, right now she's stabilized already. But the main thing right now is what are we going to do concerning this violence actually erupting almost in every corner of Nigerian football? NNL, the second tier, MPFL, you don't even go there at all. You look at Nationwide League One, everywhere. Since violence uh, is becoming the norm of the day in Nigerian football. Uh, well, this is not just an issue of uh, football or sports. Uh, violence has, you know, predominantly taken over every fabric of our society. Mm. Even when you see people talk on the streets, just even in the lift, somebody will say, uh, stop me here. Yeah, but when you go to other lands, you see, if somebody will tell you, please stop me here. Mm. So our language has become a little bit militarized, and we love, uh, we've lacked this civil uh, way of conducting ourselves. So I'm very unfortunate. I officiated as far as the Nigeria Professional Football League, that is the then Premier League. I did that for eight and a half years. Mm. I don't see, I've not seen this type of violence before. It is happening now as if it is a norm. And uh, I put the blame squarely on Shehu Diko, the head of the uh, LMC. LMC. I put it on Ama Jupinik, the Because if, for instance, anybody is killed in any of these, FIFA will want an explanation. Mm. You must give explanation. And uh, somehow, some clubs have not been properly sanctioned. Now, the referee that officiated one of these games here, I think the NAF Rocket game, on his way home, back to Jigawa, died in a motor accident. Hmm. I have that information. And uh, this other lady, uh, even organizations like Nawiz have come to ask, what has the NRA done to protect their own referees? This is an organization that as a matter of fact, have failed to make sure that these referees are even paid their basic allowances as referees. That's when you officiate a match, you are given a token. These referees don't get it. This more than three years now we've been talking about it. But because of their passion and desire to push the game, to continue to make sure the Nigerian league runs, uh, now we don't have, we don't have uh, this thing. Now, a female referee, if that was your sister or your daughter, how will you be happy watching this kind of pictures? Then players descended on her, severe cuts in the head. So apart from stabilizing her, they also need to follow the medical. Uh, the, uh, an MRI now is needed to determine the extent of the uh, injuries yes, sustained. The injuries she sustained. Uh, you know whether it's now going to be fatal. It affected the brain. We don't know. So I just pray that she gets well and recover. Uh, but I have been on the platform too, uh, particularly of the FCT Referees Council in Abuja here. And many of them are saying, no, we don't want to die on the pitch. We may have to stop. Referring games. Referring games. So oh. when they stop, let the players go and refer the games by themselves. Wow. Now, this, this crisis, uh, almost everywhere you go to, you see almost all the matches. In fact, before we actually got into the studio, I saw a clip of, of a match in Lagos uh, where attack here earlier there that has to do with uh, Admiralty FC where the, the fans were supporting their team and they were almost beat up the ref. He had to, she, he, I think both a male and female, they had to run uh, into the dressing room. We've seen this one. We saw what happened to Kano Pillars, uh, concerning Kano Pillars chairman, what he did and all that. And we, we look at what LMC, the ruling from LMC, 2.750 there about, and then uh, 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 actually banishing the MPF, uh, sorry, the Kando Pillars chairman. A lot of people are saying, no, it should be more than this because yes. it's getting too common. Now, uh, there was a three-match, a three-point deduction suspended against Kando Pillars that if anything of this nature happen happens again, they will take those three points away. Now, you didn't apply that. Rather, you are giving them another two points deduction without an explanation. In no land will you see a chairman of a club come down to the touchline to assault a match official. Mm -hmm. If you say fan, we'll say oh.
probably is one of those issues. But this guy left the state box, came down to, uh, and the guy that, uh, the assistant referee one, that's, that was uh, assaulted, mm. is a lawyer by, a practicing lawyer by profession. So I'm saying they should give him leave to sue this uh, Suragi of a man mm. in a regular court so that we may have some judgment stand against some people. But I don't know. As far as I know, Heartland FC of Owere, MFM FC, Casino United, and probably any other team within that relegation zone and, uh, that are, you know, they should go to court against candle pillars and against the LMC and against the NFF. They should go to court that there is a three-point suspended a sanction against Canopilas. Why are you not taking three points from Canopilas? Hmm. Shea Udiko should come and tell the media why he thinks uh, three points should not be taken off Canopilas. Are there different rules in football? I don't want to say North or South because I'm a product of the North. I did all my schooling in the, in North. the North. And uh, I've been in the North more than half of my uh, years. I'm not 50 years. I'm closer to 60 years. So I want to say uh, I, I belong to the Nuts. I am part, I've benefited a lot from the Nuts. But we shouldn't run the league as if uh, we are protecting Northern clubs. There were 26 minutes of other time played mm. in the match between Lobby and Hartland. Nobody has reviewed that match. Mm. Though you can also find Hartland complacent of, uh, uh, or guilty or complicit of uh, uh, you know, not being a little bit disciplined in that game. Because when you know you're fighting against a drop, you must fight for everything. But then, uh, these people are preparing for another league with a lot of baggages, with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, problems mm. uh, that is weighing, I mean, weighing down on the Nigerian league, making people not to feel comfortable going to a stadium, making people not to feel comfortable taking their family members to a stadium. This is very, very unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Talking about the Nigerian football, the league is really becoming so uh, violent now. Attack on referees, attack on players. A lot of issues here and there in the NNL. We're talking about GRTT players and fans attacking a female referee. And now she sustained a lot of injury. She has to be rushed to the hospital. And outside that, a lot of issues here and there. Well, also looking at Kano Pillar's uh, issue. Well, the assaulted assistant ref is actually a lawyer. So let's see what's going to happen concerning that. And for the LMC, the ruling concerning Carlo Pillars, a lot of people are looking at, it seems uh, uh, they, they are not showing too much, too much uh, shorts that have, been, that have been taken against Carlo Pillars there. But let's see what happens concerning MPFL. Now, quickly, let's look at the Professional Football League result for the weekend. MPFL, match day 35. Congrats to Rivers United. They've done it. They've won the league despite losing to Nasarawa uh, United. Looking at the result, Niger Tenado's 4 0 against Quara United. We have Aqua 2 1 against Plateau in Uyo. The Sunshine Stars 2, MFM 1. Eimba, they play goalless against Heartland in an Oriental Derby. You have Katsina United 3, Remo Stars 2. Dakada lost against Lobby Stars in Makodi. White Bombay United defeated Wiki Tori by 2 goals to 1. Shizu Stars of Ibadan, it was a 2 2 draw against Abia Warriors. White Candle Pillars peeped Enugu Rangers by a long goal, and Nasarawa United defeated Re Rivers United. But despite that defeat, Rivers United, they've now won uh, the league because uh, three matches to go, and if you calculate that, they are leading with 10 good points when it comes to the table uh, in the MPFL. Let's look at the way the table is standing right now in the MPFL. Rivers United, yes, they are champions, 71 points after playing 35 matches, 10 points ahead of Plateau United, who are second on the law with 10 points now, and you have three matches to go, that nine points. So already they won it with an extra one, even before playing the three matches. Good one for Rivers United. They finally show class in this league. Yeah, I'm, I'm so happy for Stanley Eguma, mm. one of the um, oldest coaches we have in the land. I must also uh, say that uh, he is... Uh, one coach that have been able to stay in one club for a long time to be able to uh, enunciate his policies, his style of play, and make players benefit from it. Uh, but each time he comes so close, he does not win it. He comes too close, he does not win it. But after that near syndrome issue, uh, Stanley Guma has finally has been able to win the title for Rivers United. And now that uh, it has happened, I think uh, we have been able to settle the issues between the title winners and uh, the other champions, uh, champions league, yeah, the other champions league uh, 
uh, qualify, that is uh, Plateau United. So those teams are settled. Mm. And the ones not settled now is the second con calf, con uh, calf Champions League ticket. Mm. And, you know, re re both Remo and the uh, Rangers lost their games. Yeah, both Remo and uh, Rangers, they lost their games, meaning uh, that uh, they, that particular slot is still open. The mm. first spot or the first Nigerian spot for CAF Confederation Cup will come from the Atio Cup, mm -hmm. uh, or the Confe uh, F Ni Nigeria Federation Cup, whichever you, one you want to say. So let me believe that uh, we have been a very good one uh, this time. Rivers United being champions for the first time after a long time, and the Plateau United have also shown that, yes, uh, there is something that is mm -hmm. in that guy, that coach, Fidel is uh, Ilich Chuku. I think Catlan didn't get the best out of him because of their financial crisis or their um, sort of bad management and, uh, you know, that have prevailed over uh, some years now. So good one for him, but for uh, Rivers United, this is a time to go one step further. Uh, Nigerian teams have done very poorly on the continental scene mm. and both the CAF Champions League and CAF Confederation Cup. Rivers United have to show that yes, we got some stuff and we can build on that. Um, we are running a true professional club. Uh, that's one team you don't hear too much of players uh, being owed this or being owed that. And don't forget, uh, they, you usually have um, Rivers Angels always has champions Why Rivers United struggled. But now that Rivers Angels have been dethroned, that's their women team, mm -hmm. the guys have come to say, uh, we're yeah, here. Yeah. Perhaps um, they, they don't want Governor Wicked to hold both trophies at the same time. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Congrats to Rivers United for winning the MPFL, even with three matches to go. This is good for them, uh, looking at the MPFL. Well, now next story has to do with the same MPFL because the national coach of South the Super Eagles coach, uh, Jose Pizero, was at Uyo to watch uh, the game there, and good one. He has rated professional footballers high. Comes coming from uh, P uh, Pizero there, at least our players are doing well. According to him, he's so happy. This is the second match he's watching since he became the coach of the Super Eagles, and is rating the the MPFA players are. That's a good one, at least. Uh, this is a man I didn't support mm. uh, the NFF to hire. Um, I had the feeling that we're just going to play the AFCON. So let us do with our home desk coach, but not a Guavon, of course. Um, now I'm telling you I'm getting in love with this guy. Mm. One, because he's doing what others didn't do. He has been to a Loring. And uh, even though his flight was delayed, he made sure that uh, his, uh, he contacted the officials there. The game was postponed by 30 minutes to allow him to arrive. He watched that game as well. Mm. Um, there is no type of football we we'll play in this country without giving exposure to our own local players here that will amount to good football. Now, you bring players from all over the world. That is what is killing basketball. You go and bring and harvest Nigerian players all over the world to say they are representing Nigeria why we can churn out more, many more players from this land to go and play elsewhere in the world and bring back dollars, bring mm. back pounds sterling, the currencies that will help us uh, beat this issue of scarcity of dollars and, uh, mm. you know, uh, in, in Nigeria. So I want to say, outside that, he's been so busy and vocal, visible in the social media. He has sent out tweets commending our uh, under-17 women team, the guys that qualified in uh, Cape in Coast, Ghana, Ghana and those who are that also the, the ladies. Uh, you know, so it goes to say that uh, he's really showing interest. He's buying into the project of Nigeria. Uh, perhaps he's on the way to prove people like me, critics like me, wrong. Hmm. That would be nice, at least. Let's see if he's zero continuing this particular act of his going to watch uh, all these uh, MPFL matches across Nigeria. Now, before we go, the man has been, at least the aim of Arsenal has been achieved by at least agreeing with uh, Gabriel Yuzus of Manchester City for the five million pounds deal in a five-year deal. They are a good one for Arsenal. Finally, they got their man. Well, the announcement will be made soon, but from the way it is now, if I agree with five years and finally, uh, at least uh, finalizing the papers, concerning him moving? Um, for the uh, other side of North London, mm. I think they will be rowing themselves. They said, oh, we have Champions League football for you at sports. Come to sports. And he said, no. He said, no. Um, I also see it as uh, uh, the Brazilian wanting to join his former coach or assistant uh, coach at Man City. That is Ateta in Arsenal. 
It's a huge project when you have five years contract. Mm. Uh, I bet you there will be a lot of goals coming from Gary Jesus. Um, this, 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 one, this is a Brazilian that has more than 50 international caps under his belt already. Mm. And uh, he is also uh, just about 25 years. Um, Arsenal will really, really uh, harvest goals from Gabriel Jesus. That's it. What is remaining now is the add-ons and the details of the contract. Uh, but uh, beyond that, um, uh, they've already signed. You, okay, beyond that, you already also know that they're also going after another Brazilian in, instead of, uh, in Leeds United. And if Rafinha is been able to bring, uh, if they're able to bring Rafinha to uh, the Emirates, then Arsenal will be one of the teams to watch out for. Well, let's wait if that's exactly concerning Rafinha. But congrats now, the Gordia man finalizing the papers for Gabriel Jesus to join them over there at the Lord's London. Congrats to Arsenal, and that will be it on 360 Sports. It's been a wonderful time with Chinedu Ohanusi. Good to have you once again. It's a pleasure, and uh, hoping that our league authorities will make the Nigerian Professional League, the Nigerian National League, even the Women's League is running better. We can emulate them, if not, you know, emulate the best in the world. It can it should possible. be stopped. Holy, hooliganism must be stopped at our league venues. It is very possible that we can do that. Hopefully, we can fix things well in Nigeria. I am Madeni Ajishafe. Thanks for watching. Sport is always business and fitness. Once again, thanks. thanks.